Beautiful. Is that a bird nest? It is. So what was it A drunken bum. When I was out in California four or five years ago. Oh. Yeah, this is disgusting. I think this was converted like in the 70s. Oh, and touch no, don't touch anything. your face. <laughs> Can you stop now? Right, let's get this pile home. <clears throat> I like how they got this transmission set up. Hey Rob. Great. How's it going? Get, getting ready to do some bus work. <laughs> you know how it goes. Batteries must just be a little tall. Yeah. Now the battery height's the same and the caps are just a little different than they used to make. Okay. Try to start it up. We got this thing backed up a little bit. Um, we're working on the brake pedal right now. Rob's in there undoing hoses that go to this setup here. This is the brake application valve, which is stuck. You got your throttle here. That works fine with this. Seized right up. Rob and I are working on cleaning up the brake application valve because the one that, the two that we bought just for this were not what was in it at all. So we had to get this to work. Um, okay. Well, this is, this is the top of the, yeah, give me one the application second. valve. And the brake pedal pushes directly down on this. And we finally got it out of the bus and 
it was all corroded and rusted and just seized up and that's why it wasn't moving. So we finally got these three screws out and got this freed up. Uh, we had to heat this with a, with a torch, twist it free, and now I've just been sanding away. And Rob's over here working on cleaning the inside of his valve up. Yeah, the uh, innards were all fully oiled from the, the oil that was in the air system, and it was all enclosed away from the uh, the rust that was on the outside, so from everything we can see, the, the valve looks like it's good to go, the O-rings look like they're in good shape, we're going to put 40 weight oil on everything, I've been cleaning up the insides, and we'll bolt it all back together and we should be good to go. And that, uh, we got pretty lucky on this because we don't have to change the plumbing around or anything. So, now we just got to change the tires, figure out uh, how to build full air pressure, figure out how to uh, use the transmission, uh, make sure everything else is bolted down. We're good to go in about 10 hours. The the flasher yep. doesn't seem to be working on the driver's side. The left side works okay. Oh, excuse me, I'll be around. There's but a I, hole on that side, right? Can I use a hand signal? You just flip the switch and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. Like you can't hear the flasher engaging. We probably got to pull the switch off and clean the contacts on it. Just clean the contacts, yeah. Is that going to clean it up? Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks real good on the inside. I think that was the last bit of this application valve. You're going to try to drive it, but I'm putting that power stretch on it there. I need to get maybe look over there in his face. We probably pull over up there. I ain't going nowhere. I'm, I'm here. I'm flying. I ain't good. <laughs> I said, man, we only got another hour. Yeah, but they're young and full of beans. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I know it's a whole nother ball of wax, but uh, that MC5 I keep talking about. That uh. It's a 35 footer and it's aluminum with stainless steel. Uh, oh yeah, like I said, whole nother animal. Yeah. Uh, that not knowing anything about buses. We just assumed that that was manual steering all for about two years. <laughs> so we figured it out. Well mine over there is old enough that it was manual steering. And yeah. I had steering on it. Yeah. If it wasn't hard it wouldn't be a good story to tell about it. Ah, that's right. It's all going on YouTube right now. <laughs> I appreciate all the help, guys. I just want you to make it home safe and without having to break down. Yeah, that makes a lot of us. That's the way to give you half your money back right now and just keep it. No, that's alright. No, I'll be off it. The engine alone has got in the neighborhood of fifteen thousand dollars worth of uh, parts and work in it. Yeah. And got less than twenty, thirty thousand miles on the motor. Sit out there ever since October, November, whenever he was up here, and they put the new batteries on it. it didn't they, the crank didn't even turn over a whole turn? Oh yeah, that's the way you before it started. <clears throat> but it, it did that even back in the cold winter when I started. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That boot isn't going to stay on there, but. Has he got that on there, man? That boot? The lip below it is all corroded. Oh, is it? Yeah. What you might do. Yeah, it's going to come off. I, th I imagine. We'll, we'll... Alright, it's just after 7. We are. Trying to start the bus right now from the front. I don't know if we can do that. Um, <clears throat> believe it or not, all the marker lights. Well, as I say that, there's one out in the front. Okay, most of the marker lights work. Headlights work. One side turn signal bulb is out. <clears throat> all of the marker lights in the back are working.
thinking about taking her out on the road in a little bit. See how the brakes work. Yeah? Didn't notice it before, but our, uh, we do have a tack that <coughs> Ooh, does it work? Yeah, the tack works. Okay. Uh, a speedometer, not so much. Uh, we are going 30 miles an hour. No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm going to go verify the oil pressure from here with the oil pressure on the... Uh, What's oh, it saying here? It's saying 40, which okay. is what it's supposed to be. Right. Actually, it's jiggling a little bit, so I'm so <coughs> that's right. Maybe. Water temperature is a little goofy. I think it's been over... I think it's been there for a while. In the back here, we have gotten both these windows open, which was a challenge. Um, <clears throat> the track here, it was all buggered up right there, and it wasn't wanting to open. Uh, we got that squared away, and these straps here are meant to hold our rear glass in place in case the, you know, the rubber <coughs> seals were to fail and there's been lots of horror stories of the wind just sucking those windows out and smashing them all over the highway so uh, we've done that I'm trying to think of other things we've done to get this thing going um, played with switches mostly switches needed to be uh, greased up with some WD just to get a uh, good contact enough to work um, this pedal working I don't know if the lights are going to work also <clears throat> but that noise kind of verifies that the switch is working the, excuse me, the application valve so that's a relief <clears throat> I hope that also activates the brake lights uh, we put air in the tires put oil in it secured a couple body panels that were Questionable. Um, I can't think of anything else right now. Alright, last night we uh, we gave up and we went to, what was it, seriously? Yep. About 20 minutes up the road <coughs> and we got a hotel room there and uh, today we're Oh, we also visited a Walmart super center. We bought this uh, hose and other plumbing supply stuff. How do you call these? Hose clamps? Hose clamps, there we go. And now we're uh, fixing this leak in the back. Uh, what do you think this did? The uh, uh, sending unit? You yeah, the, well, you, both of the units that the, the hose goes between have wires coming off of them. Um, and we know we're building 70 or 80 pounds of air in the airbags and in the air system because we tested it and the airbags are also inflating and that takes about you know at least 80 or something PSI um, but we never see above uh, 45 PSI at idle um, so I'm thinking that the hose that goes between those two that was leaking real bad is keeping us from uh, getting a a correct reading up front. Of course, it's also leaking real bad, so I mean, it's not helping us maintain our air pressure, but. It was more than just leaking, it was just like. Oh, yeah, the, the hose was basically busted was, in half. Yeah. And, uh, so we're getting this squared away right now. Uh, what else we gotta do? Um, check the air pressure in the tires. The rear ones that we couldn't get to, we also got some. I don't know where it is. We got some pressure kit and checkers. Yeah. And another uh, a long stem tire filler so that we can get into the inner dualies. Um and I think there's gonna be I think there's probably three or four of the little air leaks we're gonna try and fix back here if we can. Um those have to deal with the uh the fuel shut off when you uh cut the master switch, uh the fast idle switch for startup. A couple of little things like that. Where's the switch? Uh, yeah, it's here in my pocket. Alright, we just pulled this thing out of the yard. We're, um, Rob's driving. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure. I guess the pull side's on the passenger side, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess. We 
just put in $150 worth of diesel. We're gonna move it beside this air uh, fuel tank over here. And we're gonna go back and talk to Lewis. out of Arkansas now. We are going to finish tying this strap down. We got this hooked to the generator back there just because we're kind of concerned the way it was resting on the, the door over there. Rob's pulled it tight and we're just going to let it hang out right here. And then we're going to be heading down to Oh, I don't know what the name of the town is. Memphis. Memphis. A little more than a town. No, no, no. Where were, wherever that Walmart was back a little ways. Oh yeah, we're gonna go. Yeah, we're gonna go a couple towns east in Arkansas. Stop, stop at, at a Walmart. Walmart and get some food. It's about two o'clock. We're just heading out now. But uh. Hey, it's seven o'clock. The uh, well, it's probably been about an hour since the truck driver came and left, dropped the bus off, and it's good to be back. I'm tired of being on the road. And my battery's dead. And I'm out of tape. Well, I'm out of memory. We'll see what we can do in the morning when we got some light. 